what no one else sees is that a lot of times the pathway to exploration and discovery is adversity. I was an inheritor of a circumstance that I did not ask for and I did not create. But I wanted a responsibility to change it because in the final analysis, that's all you really can do. You can lament or languish or you can believe and build and I chose the other. But there's a step between adversity and innovation. How do you get there from one place to another? We say all the time that necessity is the mother of invention. I actually think it's adversity. Most good people I know, most good people you know, have had to endure something, have had to overcome something, something that they too didn't ask for and something that they too did not create. For me, that middle step from adversity to exploration and discovery was education. That was the pathway. That's why I'm here. I learned early on that I had some command of the classroom. I knew, based on my performance, that I had a brain, despite all of the arrows that were flung at my self-esteem, all the things I was told I was never going to be, couldn't be, because of what I looked like or because of where I had come from. But my love, my relentless, unyielding love of reading gave me something that I so fundamentally needed, and that was a vision. When you're born into a difficult situation or circumstance, that is what you need. You need a vision of a different way and a different direction. And that is what all of you can bring in some way, shape, or form. It's the old nature versus nurture argument. And if I were a person who needed to tell you to sit on this stage and say, I was born with a singular will. There's something different about me, something special about me. In fact, there's nothing special about me. There's nothing within me that I don't believe exists in all the other young people who also find themselves in difficulty, that they too didn't ask for, that they didn't create, and that no one would certainly willingly sign up for. But there is a hunger, there's a desire, there's a push, which fueled me throughout my childhood. I'm sitting across from this foster home one particular hot summer afternoon when I hear the sound of feet approaching me. Now, the rules of the foster home that I am in are terrible and insidious. I can't make eye contact with you if you're an adult. I cannot read in your presence. These are their rules, and my daily life is spent trying to navigate their rules in their way. So if I made eye contact with you, I would immediately drop my eyes, because if we exchanged eye contact for any period of time, then you would see the truth of what was happening and then more violence would descend upon me. So I would look away. I am petrified at the sound of these feet coming. And in my mind, I want them to keep walking, keep walking. But the feet don't. They stop right in front of me. And to this day, I can tell you what was on those feet some 35 odd years later, a pair of white tennis shoes with no laces that had a ring of blue rubber that went around them and the left one was scuffed just a little bit more than the right. And the feet start talking to me. And they say, what are you reading there? And I was so afraid I just held up my latest mystery. And the feet say, well, weren't you reading that last week and shouldn't you be done by now? This astounded me. How did she know I was reading the same book over and over and over again? And I said, well, when I finish, I just go back to the beginning and I hope that I will see something different. And the feet say nothing, and they just crunch away from me. Well, later on that night, there's a knock at the door. And I recognize the sound of her voice immediately for two reasons. One, she used my name, a rarity in the circumstance that I was in. You remember every small kindness, every interaction, so using someone's name was important. And using my name in particular was important. Now, truth be told, I was eavesdropping, especially when I heard my name. So I came running around the corner really quickly. And now, all of a sudden, these feet are attached to someone. I can physically see her now. And she's a small woman. 
And even that distracts me because in her arms is a box. And I'm a little fella at the time. I can't see what was in it. And I'm getting on my tippy toes. I'm trying to look in. And she lowers it so I can see. And in that box were bunches and bunches of books that she would not only bring me that day, but she would bring me many days over the years. Most times, I never saw her. But if I came home from school, I would see a box there. And I knew that she had been there. And I knew that she saw something in me that no one else did. 